Good morning, everybody. I don't know if you can tell by the train tracks behind me, but I am at a train station. And today, I am correcting a mom fail because I didn't realize till we got out here that Kay has never ridden on a train before. So they have this really cool 1880s um, steam engine that goes between here and Hill City. So we're actually doing a round trip to round trip. We're gonna start here in Keystone. Um, this is the train station here. We're gonna take the train over to Hill City, spend a couple hours there, cause Kay didn't go the other day, and then we're gonna hop the train back. So it's gonna be a really cool day. Follow along. And we're supposed to be boarding the train right now because the train's supposed to take off 10 15. We're supposed to board at 10, and it's not here yet. So we're on the Keystone car, it's really pretty. So this is exciting. Kay's taking her first steam engine ride. We are on the train. Um, I just want to enjoy the ride because I don't know this afternoon it might be stormy so it may not be as enjoyable of a ride home. So um, I'm just going to do some filming. We're just going to put it to music and let it play. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride to Hill City. We did it. We made it to Hill City. Um, we got in late because um, the train left late. So we only have about two hours. So Kay just wants to watch the train hook up, uh, fill up. And then, um, actually, I don't think this, it doesn't fill up here. It only fills up in Keystone, but it's just switching tracks to get on the other side of the train. There's a railroad museum literally right here that we're going to do. And then Kay wanted to go to the alpaca store because um, she loves alpaca fur stuff. And then we're just going to wander a little until it's time to go back. So <clears throat> we came back to the Hill City Cafe because I knew they had chicken fingers and fries. And um, me and dad really enjoyed it the other day. So Kay's gonna get the chicken fingers. And I'm torn between the steak tips and the quesadillas. I think I'm gonna get the steak tips though. So Kay's chicken fingers look amazing. They actually look homemade. And these are my steak tips, which I already snuck a little piece of um, pepper and it tastes delicious. Two hours later. Back to the train station, and next stop is the South Dakota State Railroad Museum, and that will help us pass the time up till we get back on the train. So there's a lot crammed into this museum. Like here is an original um, door from the 1950s, and this is just old railroad graffiti. Oops, I just totally elbowed Kay in the face. I'm sorry, Kay. It says Kilroy was here on here, but I don't actually see the Kilroy was here little guy so I'm not sure obviously this is a train museum they have a lot of train museums they also have a really big model railway here which is really cool um, Deadwood had that hidden one too so this one's neat as well yeah. this is cool it's like a track velocipede and it had a long wheel to stretch across but then you basically just rode on one rail this is really cool so we got one train running back by Mount Rushmore and another train coming this way. And then there's a third train that just came out of the tunnel over here. Very cool. Oh, very cool. And there's a little window for the, under, for the tunnel. And he's coming home. I can see his case face. There it is. Let's hold it right up against. There we go. really like 
like a behind the scenes look. So it shows how they just use like foam insulation to form the mountains. And then eventually they coat it so that it looks like these. And it's really cool, a couple different spots. They have buttons to make the sounds. So this is what the sawmill sound like down a ways back was on the sounds of the ball game. Very cool. When you'd come in to purchase your tickets, you'd go through the gates and then behind in the office, this is basically what it looked like. You have a map, all the different tickets they sold. Very, very cool. Oh, storms are brewing. Good thing we'll be getting out of here soon. Located at specific parkings are listed all aboard the 1880 train guidebook. Very cool. He's like greasing all the parts of the train. I guess they do that in between each stop to make sure she runs smooth as silk. This train is fantastic. It's absolutely, it's really only like a 10 mile ride, but the train goes so slowly um, that it takes about an hour each way. I do recommend the round trip because you do get like about two hours to Wander Hill City. And it's a little bit different information each way. And if you swap sides of the train, you see different things each way. Um, definitely highly, highly recommend. It's like kind of a once in a lifetime thing because there's not many 1880 steam trains around anymore. And um, this is such a historic railway that you have to do it. Tomorrow. Hello from Wind Cave. Why did you lock the car? Oh, hello from Wind Cave. Na oh, that was the car telling you the keys are still in it. That's why. Hello from Wind Cave National Park. Um, Jen here. Dad's working his way over. Totally forgot to do an intro. We actually are doing Custer State Park before this. Um, so the first thing you're gonna see is Custer State Park, and then we'll come, and it's windy. It's earning its name. So there's a scenic ADA accessible overlook on Iron Mountain Road. 
which is the way we're taking to Custer State Park, and you actually have a really cool view of the entirety of the Mount Rushmore National Monument. So you can see like the parking structures, the buildings, and you can see Mount Rushmore itself in the distance. This is me and Grandpa have driven some crazy roads, right? But this is the most blood, butt clenching road we've driven yet. This is unbelievable. This is uh, wild. Oh, look, you can see Mount Rushmore, right? There you go. Now you've been to Mount Rushmore with us. And that's literally it. So now you don't have to come here. <laughs> <laughs> this road is nuts. Well, they're not fluffy cows, but they are wild turkeys, even though I see them like on the daily at Disney. Doesn't matter. It's another animal I can check off my list. <laughs> This is awesome. There's, is that a mountain goat or is that just a? It's a mountain. No, it's a mountain goat. That was so cool. Oh, there's fluffy cows everywhere. This is the coolest thing ever. Is he gonna cross the road? Is he gonna do it? He's gonna do it. Yes. Someone comes flying over that hill. I gotta hit him. And he's gonna stop. Oh look, he's just looking at us. He's like, "What? Uh -oh. Can I help you?" Oh, this is not good. We could be sitting here a while. Yes. <gasps> baby oh yes and they're coming this way two babies oh there's babies oh my god this is the greatest day ever oh my god they're so cute oh, there's another baby coming oh. i'm living my best life right oh, now look at that oh, three look of at them running. oh my god please cross the road oh my god you're so there's the baby oh my god they're so tiny This is so cool. Well, there's more coming, so we're gonna be sitting here a while. Pushing it on, like, get away from the road. Oh, <gasps> Whoa, there's so many of them. Watch that one. They're right there. This is the greatest moment of my life. They're right there. Like, here's my window, and there's the fluffy cow. We're kind of stuck again because yeah. this one's like about to cross. That's like a juvenile. Come on, Mr. So these are the wild burrows, and they're actually very accustomed to people, and you can walk up and pet them. So unlike the fluffy cows, these ones are pretty cool, and you can walk right up to them. Um, and sometimes, I guess people must feed them, because they'll literally come right up to you. It's pretty awesome. They must be accustomed to going up to the, cow the cars and getting fed, because they keep going up to dad. really trying to get into the van very cool he's literally like straight up begging at the van it's so cool hi buddy how are you really no don't no stop 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 what are you doing stop uh, he almost hit you what's wrong with him hi there handsome oh there's a pronghorn an actual close one so cool. That is, that is a awesome. 
Where they run? They're so fast. Oh, this is the greatest. Oh, look at scared old prairie dogs. That's awesome. So a little prairie dog town right here, um, right where the entrance sign is. Although the prairie dogs here must have a lot of people because they tend to stay back. Oh wow, there's a huge, you can see all the white spots are all prairie dog holes. So right there and right there, there's two more pronghorn. Let me see if I can zoom in a little better so you can see them. No, there we go. I'm trying not to shake too bad. But you can see one on the left of the screen and one on the right. I'm just chilling. Oh my gosh, the prairie dogs were just in the road. They're so cute. Oh no, no, but hi. behind us? Nope. So cute. Oh my god, they're so tiny. You don't want to touch them though, because they carry the plague. Okay, it's very bumpy because the road's under construction, but there's a little waterfall here as we're driving through hot springs looking for a place to eat lunch. Our next stop is the Mammoth site here in Hot Springs, South Dakota, and this is not a woolly mammoth. I forget what it's called. Uh, Cambrian or something like that. But um, this is one of the best mammoth finding areas in like the country, possibly the world. I can't remember exactly what it said. But um, yeah, we're gonna tour it and see some of the different mammoths they found. All right, so I was wrong, they're Colombian mammoths. And these actually look a lot like modern day elephants. They're just significantly larger. So now we're heading into the bone bed and this is actually the main exhibit where all the fossils are. Wow, look at the woodwork in this building. These arches are beautiful. This building is gorgeous. I haven't even seen a dinosaur yet. So this is a mural representation of what it would have looked like um, when the Colombian mammoths were roaming this area. Pretty cool. Because there's the shortmouth bear, the pronghorn, turkeys, they have the Colombian, they have Lamassu, I think they called them. Um, they had a, an older um, version of the bi bison, wolves, very cool. So this is really neat. So when they find the fossils um, in the wild, like in the mountainside, basically they identify where the fossils are. They coat them in concrete, like completely. They cover them with rocks and soil and stuff and like felt and then basically make a concrete cast or plaster cast around it and then they dig that out and that's how they keep them preserved until they can get them back actually here because here is where they do the mammoth excavations and um, reconstruction in this actual building <clears throat> so the really cool thing is this is actually one of their excavation sites so these are as they found them and they built the building around it which is really, really cool. So they had to go this deep. Yep. And um, they still have some bones as they found them all over the place. So this was like a huge mass grave for mammoths. And if you look, it tells you that like that layer up there was 140,000 years ago. And as you go deeper, it gets older. I mean, it's just everywhere you look, there's bits and pieces of actual, these are real bones of mammoths. That's amazing. So do you see where those green arrows are? Every one of those green arrows is where a mammoth footprint is. That's pretty cool. And do you see that striated bone right there? That's actually one of their molars. So they were humongous teeth. Okay. So it says this was 140,000 years ago, and this covers about 50,000 years, this section. This is really cool. 
This reminds me of Dinosaur National Monument, how they had the wall where they left all the bones in it. Except this is like an entire building is way more uh, bones here. So here where you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. So right here you can see the skull and you can see two of the molars. That is wicked cool. And right here, see how like on this side it's more of a yellow and on this side it's a red. So that's actually the border of the sinkhole. So that's where the fossils stop. So that's how they knew where to stop digging. So this is a North American short face bear. This was, these were big bears. So for instance, where is, this is a Kodiak brown bear. Um, like what you see up in Alaska. Nope, sorry, that's a European Cape bear. That's a Kodiak, like a brown grizzly bear. That's a polar bear. And this is how big the giant short face bear was compared to him six feet tall. That would be terrifying. So this is cool. So this is all the different sizes of all the different species of mammoths. There was the pygmy mammoth, then the Asian mammoth, then the woolly mammoth, which is the one you're most familiar with. Then the African elephant, oh, which is, I guess, what we, oh, that's what lives today. Wow, woolly mammoths were smaller than just regular elephants. And then the Colombian mammoth, which is what we saw representation of outside and what most of these skeletal remains are. So here we go. So here's the woolly mammoth and that's the Colombian mammoth. They were so much bigger than the woolly mammoths, than the African mammoth, than the African elephant we have today would be somewhere in between the two in size. This is cool. So you're at the bottom here, you're at 190,000 years ago and they're doing some actual live excavations here. You can see where they've covered some, I guess that they want to pull out and cast. And they have like a whole mammoth here all wrapped up in on itself. Then they have the fossil preparation lab where they're actually working on fossils and kind of extracting them from the concrete and building them and putting them all back together. Very cool. So this is really cool. So you can see how she's really taken her, um, like it's the little dental pick type tool and really just removing all the stone and rock and just exposing the entirety of the bone. And that looks like a pelvic from a Colombian. But very cool. And you can see where they've covered other ones that they're prepping. And because this is an active dig site, you see these tracks in the ceiling? That's the actual crane. Remember how in the beginning I showed you these pieces? So once they get it all packaged up, they use this crane up here to actually lift it out of the sinkhole and get to um, a rare little dolly where they can take it into the excavation and the preparation lab. And this is cool, as you're walking up, there's little sections with rocks and with signs, and it explains about that era and tells you what type of rocks there are. So this is Fall River, Lakota, Sundance, and Unk, Unk Papa Sandstones and Gypsum. And all of these, in each of these sections, all of these rocks are found in these hills. That's how old they are. These hills, they said, are older than the Rockies. This is a really cool thing. We're on our way back to the parking lot. But because it's kind of a steep grade to get up to the front, um, they will actually, if you call this number right here, one of the staff will bring a golf cart to pick you up to drive you up to the museum, which is really cool. And there's a very, this is actually the only place where I've ever seen that as an option. And those right there are the needles. That's what we came up here to see. Um, that's what the, those, that's the mountain formation that this highway is named after. That is cool. Now this is what I came for. Oh my gosh. This is just unreal how pretty it is right here. Oh. And I mean, you can see for an eternity. This is crazy. And you can even like, I think you can even climb up in there. I don't know if we're gonna tackle all that today. So I climbed up a little bit. Salvation's killing me. We're probably, 
Well, between five and six thousand feet right now because uh we're getting near the highest peak which is 7242 i might hike down a little more we'll see so i just came from over there and the views just keep getting better oh my gosh it's so amazing up here it is so quiet I just love this. Just being out here with nothing. Oh, these are the wildest rock formations I have ever seen. And I've seen a lot of the country, but I've never seen anything like this. And these are all natural. This is a really cool lake. Again, sorry, not used to the elevation. But these rocks are all easily accessible for climbing. So much fun in here. And because it's not Florida, there's no gators. So you can actually go into the water here. And they even have this cute little feeder creek that feeds into the lake. So cool. There's even a little trail. So you can walk right up to the water. And since I've got my handy dandy crocs on, we're going to see how cold this water is. That's a crayfish. Is there a crayfish in here? Or did someone bring that for, let's see. Oh yeah, it's very cold. Ooh, that's cold water. Wow. So that peak, just peeking through the trees there, that is the highest point in South Dakota. It's Black Elk Peak and it's 7,244 feet high. There you go, now you're getting a view of it. that peak right there. It's really cool how you can see the storms like super far away. That's so cool. Wow, it comes out really good on the camera. So for our last night here in town, we are stopping at the Front Porch Restaurant and they have a really fun menu. Um, some of their sandwiches, like they have the Holy Terror Burger, the Monumental, the George Washington, and their sandwiches are the best. The Conductor, the Miner, the, and the Hick Chick. This place is great. You're good, you can eat. Dad got the, sir the six ounce sirloin. We actually both did. He got his side, side was coleslaw, my side was sweet potato fries. So, and we both got the steamed vegetables. If you like these videos, please click that subscribe button, tap the like, and ring that notification bell so you always know when a new video is headed your way. Thank you so much for watching, and now we're on to the next adventure. Bye guys! Today's video brought to you by Orlando for Families. For amazing prices and even better customer service on all of your stroller rental needs for your Orlando vacation, visit them at the website listed below, www.orlandoforfamilies.com. Use the promo code OHANA to save 15% off of their already competitive prices.